Okay, everybody. Good morning, afternoon, or evening. It's that time. It's free tip Friday. And we have a special treat for you. Um, as you may have seen in the newsletter, Emily had a little bit of a conflict for today. So we had a great time with her on Wednesday with her um, fringe broadcast. It was great, or her, her um, brick stitch broadcast. Um, and then, um, so we did a little bit of moving around and we traded this Friday for next Friday. So I hope you guys are all okay with that. Um, we are excited. So I've got Janice here on the line. Let's see if she's Hi, there, JP. Hi, okay. Janice. Let's, uh, let me uh, get over here and put us on the, put us on the screen. There we are. I'm not much of a uh, substitute for Emily, but I'm looking forward to her fringe uh, next Friday. Yeah, Thank me you. too. Yeah. yeah, it was a fun project, I think, for uh, yeah. for Wednesday. It was a lot of fun. We had a good time for sure. And it looks like, JP, a bunch of people are jumping on. Oh, so good. we've got Gita over there saying hello and all of the usual suspects um, hanging out. So that's great. But we thought we would do new people. Hello yeah, to all the new people. Yeah, a bunch of new people as well. It's great to have all of you guys all here. Yeah. Um, so we have a couple of um, questions that we're going to address today. Um, and uh, hang on, I'm just texting Drea here real quick. Because we uh, there we go. Do the doctor next week, the first yeah, Friday of we the month, were. and because Emily couldn't make it, we switched. So we today switched we're going to answer questions. Yes. Yeah, so here we are. Yeah. Um. So we've got a couple of questions. I don't know uh, if we just want to start out, Janice, with um, uh, with the bullion. I think. And I'm going to add, I've got the bullion sitting in front of me. We had a question. Mm -hmm. We have had a lot of questions about bullion and about how to use it. And we've got mm -hmm. some great tutorials on it. Mm -hmm. But I gathered here, let me add this into the stream. And let me, let me work a little bit of my magic here. There we are. Um, our different bullion that we have with our different uh cord so why don't you talk a little bit jp about your love of the bullion okay and um, what what we do with it so bullion really is i'm not going to say it's ancient but it's been around for several uh a couple at least a couple hundred years uh primarily used in um fine uh, gem and pearl uh, knotting in um, European jewelry. And if you go into museums and you see, I have to actually, I turned messages off. <laughs> Sorry. And, and, and yet I'm still getting messages. You're still getting, people just, just want to message you, JP. <laughs> so let me start again. So, so bullion is a very old fashioned sort of we call it a finding and it's mm -hmm. a very tiny tiny itsy bitsy curled wire it's it's sort of like when anyone has watched kate make jump rings and she takes a pencil and she wraps wire around a pencil and then cuts them into jump rings this is similar to that but it's using maybe a 40 gauge wire it depends on um what size you're using but it's like uh, the best way to describe it is it's like a miniature slinky and right. if you pull on it um it just destroys it you cannot pull on it or uh play with it at all because uh it's going to just 
come up. Yeah, with pull apart. Yeah. yeah, like exactly. a little spring that has sprung. Right. And the way that it's uh, traditionally used, and you've used it other ways, like in bead embroidery, yeah. it's been used in embellishments. Mm -hmm. um, the the traditional way to use it is to have a little piece at the back of uh, your necklace, and it mm -hmm. acts like the original wire guardian, where mm -hmm. it protects your thread. It could also protect your stringing wire, like Softflex. It gives the end of the necklace a very finished look, and it also keeps your thread from wearing and tearing against uh, your clasp. Because yeah, and I'm going to see if I can find a sample, Janice, while you're chatting about it. Well, <clears throat> it's usually used in, in, in pearl knotting where um, you don't use an end tip mm -hmm. and you go back through the pearls, a few pearls, and it's just a little tiny curl at the end. Um, I was thinking the same thing, Kate, and I don't happen to have a sample here. I happen to have one, JP, right okay, here. Great. So what you got? And I'll show you. Yeah, this, there was you our, go. this was our gem knotting. Mm -hmm. Piece here that you did a while back mm -hmm. and you were talking about doing the knotting, you know, right. coming up and going through that loop of the bullion mm -hmm. and then going back down. And then you went back through one, two, three beads. And right. then the final knot is right there. Right. So we have uh, instructions on how to do this in the learning section under archive projects, there's mm -hmm. one called gem knotting. And it seems difficult to do, but it really isn't. It's mm -hmm. just going up through the beads. You string on your bit, just like you would a wire guardian. You, I like to use my thread snips to get mm -hmm. a very clean cut of my, um, my bullion. Of the bullion, right? So there isn't a little snag yeah, on the end. Exactly. Yeah. Do you have a, can we open a package or do you have any sitting around? That you know, I probably do. Let me take a look and see what um, I've got. Otherwise, um, I can, I have a bunch here and I could show everybody what it's like to pull on it. <laughs> uh, I've got one, JP. I've got okay. it right here. Okay. Um, let's it take comes a look. In, it uh -huh. comes in. It now comes in multiple finishes. It's right. It's not available in gold or sterling. It's only a base metal material. It it's just base metal wire. <clears throat> and even on fine gemstone necklaces where they use a gold clasp, they will use uh, this base metal wire. Mm -hmm. And it's a nice. Um, sometimes you see also in jewelry from India. Yes. You see it used as spacers mm -hmm. as well. That's a very mm -hmm. traditional kind of a, right. a thing to use. Now, here is a piece. Janice, I'll move this out of the way. Here is a piece. That is the coil. And on this side, I'll pull it out so you guys can right. see it. And this is the heavy. Mm -hmm. And see how I pull it? And it's just a little coil that unfurls. This one, here's my thread snips. And I'll come in. And when I use bullion, and you probably do this same thing, I cut both pieces that I'm mm -hmm. going to use at the same time. So I don't have to guess so exactly. that both of the loops will be the same. So you can exactly. see that there. Now this is, Janice, I'm going to grab some of the, the cord there, but this is the, the heavy. And you can see the heavy if you're doing like a couple of strands or whatever, but the heavy has a pretty big, hmm. the, the whole size I think is 1.1 millimeter there inside it. Mm -hmm. So it it will you would use a 
heavier silk thread, right? So yeah, you match yeah, the size for, uh, of the bullion to your the thread you're using, right? Right, right. or uh, you might use an 019 softlex with mm -hmm. the, the heavy or <clears throat> multi, I, I don't know why I have a frog, I'm, I apologize. Or you might use, like you said, a uh, double strand of um, fine weight Ceylon. Mm -hmm. um, the, the trick, which I think we could, maybe we may have a moment <clears throat> to show, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> That's okay. Is that if you're going to use regular thread with like a flexible eye needle, mm -hmm. and you're not going to use the silk on the card, or nylon on a card, which mm -hmm. has an extruded needle. But if mm -hmm. you're actually using a needle that has an eye on it, you actually have to flatten the eye out before you can go through your... Um, right, uh, before you go through the wire. wire. Because it will yeah. destroy it. Yeah. Um, so I have a, a, a fine gem that I keep in my um, bead box, my pearl box. And mm -hmm. all I do with it is flatten the needle when I'm um, using bullion. It just, it's just oh, that's any kind of a bead with a very small mm -hmm. hole that will render your flexible eye needle flat so it doesn't damage the wire. And so you, before you start even stringing your piece, you prepare your needle and your thread. Mm -hmm. And then you grab that bead and you slide it down over the needle and thread and then slide it off, right? Right, you may not even get it down onto your thread, your thread, uh, the whole function of that one needle, I mean, that one bead is to just flatten the needle eye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, right, so you that, just slide it on and slide yeah. it off. Exactly. Yeah. That looks great. Um, now, thread size, so this, what I have here, I think this is a size six mm -hmm. that I have here in front of me. It's just something I got out of the box. Right. And um, Christina is asking, is there a guide to match the thread size to the bullion size? Actually, it's on our website on each yeah. size. If you mm -hmm. read the product copy, it's going to tell you what thread works with that size bullion. Mm -hmm. um, because I carry all the different sizes. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, JP. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I knew that when we started selling this and we got very excited about selling it when they started coming out with antique silver and antique uh, uh, copper and bronze. And I was just like thrilled. Mm -hmm. So we said, we've got to include in the copy. So if Christine, if you go to each one of them, the fine French bullion, um, or the medium, or the large, or the extra large, uh, you will see it says what size will fit with regular thread mm -hmm. and also the needle thread. Mm -hmm. And so we have here, and I've kind of laid it out, the silver and fine, medium and heavy. Those mm -hmm. are the sizes we carry. Okay. And then the silk with needle in two, four, six, and eight. So to my eye, without even consulting our copy, um, I think that the fine and the size two, the number four and the medium, and then the six could probably go either way, either the medium or the heavy, but I'm putting it over here in the heavy camp. The medium also, uh can go with uh, the size six. It goes between. Right. It, it yeah. Be exactly. Between four and six. Exactly. Um, yeah. The medium yeah. is a very, you know, like you can use that one till the cows come home. It's a very um, uh, flexible. It goes back and forth to different sizes. So it should, it should fit on the, the six. So here is with the size six, I happen to have the heavy open. So that's okay. what I slid on here. So I'm going to move this over. And obviously this is the join. This is where it gets mm -hmm. a little, you know, a little, you have to be kind of careful when you pull it on 
because if the bullion is going to snag, it's going to snag on the eye of the needle right there. Okay. And so essentially what you do is you'd come around and I probably should have put, this would be the closure. So let me see if I can hang on just a second. There we go. I'm going to, um, and we're going to, we're planning to do a longer show mm -hmm. on this. Let me see if I can gently get that off. I'm going to put my bead on. Will you check that you can go up and back down through your bead? Yeah, it's a glass bead, glass okay. bead, so the hole's pretty big. So I think I can. But that's one of the things that you want to check on your last beads that you are putting on. Um, you want to make sure that once you put your clasp on, and let's pretend that my clasp mm -hmm. is this jump ring right here. Mm -hmm. Get a little closer, right? Then you can see how the bullion is there. And then, like Janice was just saying, you go through that loop. And obviously, this would be at the end, right? And what I do is exactly. I move that bullion over because this is like the make it or break it moment for exactly. the bullion. Exactly. Right, so I slide it, I gently coax it. So the slack in my loop is on this side, right? You can see that there. Then what I'll do is I'll carefully pull, and I made this loop pretty big so you guys mm -hmm. can see it. I would probably, this loop is probably a third too large. But again, it just depends on the size of your um, your clasp. So you don't want this loop to be so large that it's going to catch. But then, obviously, you would knot below and go through another bead and knot below, et cetera, et cetera. But you want to just make sure that when you cut that bullion, there's no little snag. And I'll just leave it right there so you guys can look at it. There you go. Anything else, JP, to add in that? Well, I want to do an entire show just on on bullion right. because mm -hmm. uh, there's so many, you know, uh, fine tips to it. But this is a good bead doctor answer the question: How does the mm -hmm. French bullion or French wire work? So mm -hmm. I hope we've answered the question about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've got a couple of other. Uh, questions here and I'm going to go to um, the one we have on now we've got a couple of questions here one is I would like to ask the bead doctors a question about what is the best chain to use for jewelry that will not tarnish then there's a follow-up question from another viewer that says, chain, I love chain, but I'm always scared to use it in anything that is for someone else. So scared it's going to turn. This makes me shy away from it most of the time. Is it just me being paranoid? So. I think it's, I, uh, I don't think you're being paranoid. I think it's uh, an age old problem. Uh, Kate, do you agree that there's a lot of chain that's not coated that's yeah plated i mean poorly. yeah yeah well and metal just by how metal is like if even if we're looking and i noticed this and i'm gonna um polish this real quick mm -hmm. metal tarnishes mm -hmm. that's just kind of the ball game you know how it is but there are a lot of finishes like you mentioned there are finishes um that go on the metal that you can um that are put on sometimes in the manufacturing process that help to um alleviate the tarnish so but a lot of metals aren't sealed they're just kind of left to their own devices and sometimes that sealer after it ages or whatever will come off so um, this is a um, just a little toggle clasp we have on here on this piece that Janice had, and it's been hanging up on our 
project wall. And due to the many factors, you know, the, the office and the air and the, the moisture in the air and things like that, they react with the metal. So we carry these little items called a pro polish pad. Now pro polish pads are terrific. And you can see by just gently, I'm hardly even exerting any pressure. And I'll turn it over. And then all of a sudden, and this is a plated um, clasp. This is one of those um, little silver clasps, toggles from Tierra Cast. And so um, most of the Tierra Cast has like an anti tarnish on it. Um, but the ages, I think that this clasp, Janice, when you made this, this was probably in your stash from, I don't know how many oh, years. Oh, I think I made that necklace, uh, I'm going to say back at the old shop, back in yeah. 2007 or something. Yeah. Uh, can we just tell uh, the the viewers that really the, this clasp would react very similar to uh, chain that mm -hmm. is, it's, even though it's a clasp, it's going to uh, be similar uh, mm -hmm. to your chain. Mm -hmm. So what I have here also is, uh, and I just wanted to illustrate this being tarnished, so that's why I use mm -hmm. the clasp. Right. But um, all of the chains that we carry here at Bead Shop have um, an anti-tarnish coating on them. Okay, and so this is an antique, the antique silver wheat chain. And again, this is a piece that I've had kicking around here for a while. And if you look at like the ones, let's say, I think I've got one sitting here that I used. Um, let me see if I have one. Here we go. Well, even like this one, Janice, you made this one not that long ago, but you can see that it's still, this is the, that mm -hmm. antique silver, you know, it's, it's okay. So if you do want to polish your chains, the thing that you want to be aware of is that these chains are plated, right? So if you go at it with something that's super rough, like sandpaper or, you know, I don't know, what you would use right but you would you wouldn't use something that is coarse because you take that plating right off especially with heavy you know polishing and stuff so again with this pro polish pad i would just want to test this out on this antique and this pro polish may remove some of that antiquing um but it actually looks see how i've just rubbed it over the top of that chain and you can see it's taken off a little bit of tarnish there but i'm not scrubbing it right i'm just gently giving it a little shine and that's it that's all you need to do really i i think that that the tarnish question or challenge is something that is not going to happen to answer the question about giving gifts um, and being afraid that the chain is going to tarnish. It's going to take a really long time, um, at least unless someone is um, spraying a lot of perfume or cologne or hairspray or uh, but most of the time, Kate, would you agree that the, the process is so gradual? Um, you sort of wake up and you notice a year later that your chain needs to be polished? Yeah, I mean, and there's some other things that you can do as well, because again, it does, like you say, Janice, apply, rely on a lot of different factors mm -hmm. where the tarnish happens, right? So, you know, when you order from us at Bead Shop, you get a lot of little plastic baggies, right? So the first thing to do with tarnish is to try and prevent it, right? So that means 
storing your jewelry maybe in a in a baggie or your chains in a baggie um i save those little when you buy a pair of shoes you get that little silica gel packets those are great for keeping moisture away from your metals um and also if you're giving gifts what i do is i always give a little polishing cloth with one of these pro polish pads so if your recipient wants to do a little polishing on their piece or on other pieces you'll find that people once you give them one they'll it's like you know you're a pro polish pad dealer people are like where can i get another one so you know they're really um they're really handy someone did say also that the pro polish pads they have had them go gummy now the thing with pro polish pads is they don't react well to moisture. So keep these in a baggie as well, especially if you live in a more humid climate, because water and these pads do not mix. It will make the pad super gummy if it gets moist in any way. Kate, could we uh, just mention about vermeil chain or beads or clasps? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Well, what did you want to mention about vermeil? And I'll see if I have something that's vermeil. Well, vermeil is usually 18 or 22 karat gold that's been plated over sterling. We mm -hmm. used to see it a lot in um, jewelry and beads and components from India. And it's a bright, beautiful uh, yellow gold that does get a patina on it and turns sort of a bronzy gold. But you never want to use a pro polish pad on it because um, I hate to say I learned this the hard way years ago. It just takes the gold off. And yeah. you do have a nice sterling underneath but you don't have the gold anymore so yeah and i have some i have a sample of vermeil beads actually okay. jp right here and the thing that happens when you're plating metals like let's say that this button here of cynthia's right this pewter button let's say that we were going to plate it in a silver a bright silver or a gold or something mm -hmm. like that right the plating process is that before the the gold plate or the copper plate or whatever is it is is going on this piece, a layer, a chemical layer is put on the piece that's going to be plated so that the metal that is being plated hangs on tight. Okay. So that's like this chain, all of these things, there's a layer in between the base metal, whatever the metal is that's the 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 base of the um, of the piece in between that and whatever metal is getting plated on top. So vermeil, on the other hand, is more like what we call a wash, a gold wash over the top. So these, some of you may recognize these from way back in the day. These are sterling silver beads um, from India. And there is no plating layer in between sterling the sterling bead and the gold wash that's over the top right so as you say jp if i were to take my pro polish pad to this and i'm not but if i take my pro polish pad to this my vermeil would start to polish right off because it's a thin coating it's a thin wash rather than a heavy plate and um it's just going to come right off exactly so as you say, when these wear, when these vermeil beads wear, um, you can start to see the sterling underneath and they get kind of this very pleasing kind of vintage feeling to them. But vermeil is fleeting, shall we say, right? So that's great. I'm glad you brought that up, Janice, because that's something, since we don't work in sterling as much as we used to, Vermeil doesn't come into play as much as it as it as it used to. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, very nice. So we have another question, Janice, and I'm going to put us back on the screen here. We well, there we are. Um, 
we had a question about storage and about pearl storage, about leather storage. Um, and so I have a couple of things here that I wanted to share about storage, and then I'll pop it over to you. So okay. I, I have, someone asked to how we would store our beads or how we'd store um, pearls, things like that. So these I just grabbed, these are my personal boxes of beads. And as you guys know, color is real big with me. So these are just regular, like floss boxes, right? Like embroidery floss boxes. And you can see on the edge here, I've labeled these all. So I do them by color. So mm -hmm. that one is brown and orange. So that means there's brown and orange beads in there, right? This one is red. So what do you think is in there? Red beads, right? So for pearls, what I do for pearls, that's pearls are like the one thing that I don't kind of throw in with everything else. You can get these floss boxes that have long trays in them, right? So you can lay out your pearls that way. Um, but as long as, and what I like about these boxes like this is, and you can see it, this is kind of embarrassing because they're kind of, it's kind of a mess, but I'll just kind of tilt it. You can see that most of these beads in here are cut up. So when I put my beads in a box like this, I usually cut the strand up because if I don't, I'll never use it, right? I don't know what it is about that cut strand that's so sacred that if it's a strand, oh, well, I can't use it. But if it's cut up, you're like, oh, I'll use a couple of those beads. It doesn't matter. Well, we used to see that all the time at the shop. Wait, wait, you you want me to cut it? Yeah, yeah no, no. <laughs> and it's your, you're saying free the beads, you know? Right, free the beads, oh. exactly. Um, Michelle says she uses fishing tackle boxes as the slots are bigger. And that's also what Kim Golius also uh, uses, fishing boxes. And yeah, what Gita is saying here is, she is saying, free the beads. It's so true. Um, anything else you want to add to that, JP, about how you tackle your storage? Literally yeah, or figuratively? I, I, sure. I have, um, I have lots of challenges because <clears throat> I collect not only what I'm going to use, but what also we sell in the mm -hmm. shop. So that if I want to make a sample, I have something at my fingertips that I might not use in my personal jewelry, but I would use in a store sample so that we can show everyone how to use it. So I, I, use, um, I use boxes, little boxes like this. And I also mm. label them. So it says mm -hmm. pearls. Right. <clears throat> I, I don't lay my pearls out in long rows. Um, I I don't think I'm hard on my pearls. I mm -hmm. I think what I do is I love my pearls and my pearls like to be touched and they like to be worn. And you know, in all the years I've been doing this, you know, they are in a box that has mm -hmm. a top. Like I'll have boxes like this. One might be silver chain, one might be gold beads, one might be uh, just all clasps. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I don't have any problems with my pearls getting damaged. Um, mm -hmm. mm -mm. I think the real damage to pearls comes from chemicals, from makeup, from hairspray. Um, hairspray. Like when, I, you know, I'll, I think it's okay if you have a strand of truly cultured pearls. Mm -hmm. If you want to swim with your cultured pearls in a pool, like I have a, I'm not wearing it today, but I have a cultured pearl and I wear, I know I probably shouldn't, I wear it swimming together to, to every day and I, I don't see it damaged. But could I in five, six years suddenly look down and see that it's all pitted? It's possible. 
-hmm. But freshwater pearls, do not swim with them. Do not shower with them. Don't wear them to the beach and put sunscreen on. And your pearls, if you love your pearls, your pearls are going to love you back. They like to be worn. They like to be mm -hmm. touched. They love, they sound human, but they are organic. Mm -hmm. Like amber um, and coral, they are the few beads or wood that are, um, so, uh, so pearls and amber are the two organic gemstones. That mm -hmm. know of. But there's also... Like I said, there's coral, which we really discourage wearing. We don't wear ivory, uh, which is also an organic product. Wood, there's shell, there's all different mm -hmm. kinds of things. But pearls are not like any other gemstone. Um, yeah, because you want them to retain the luster and, yeah. you know, all of that as well, right? So, do you, Kate, do you wash your pearls? I do. Um, one of the things that um, one of the things that I do with pearls, and we've done it in the past with some of our pearls that we found in our vintage finds. Sometimes you find pearls, or you find, you know, an old, old, and they get yeah, they're dusty. Or sometimes you see pearls that have big holes, and they've been drilled, but they've never been rinsed. So you get a lot of the pearl dust on them. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I just put them in a little bit of like you can get like a just a shallow little pan. You can put just some tepid water and a little bit of ivory soap and just agitate mm -hmm. just a, like a drop, right? And that's mm -hmm. it. You know, they don't need pretty much they just need like a rinsing, but a little mm -hmm. bit of ivory is can't hurt give it a little bit of a swirl around and then rinse them nicely. And then I just lay them out on a few paper towels and let them dry. I like to do it on a warm day. So, you know, because the thread inside the pearl will also be wet. So mm -hmm. I will wash the pearls usually before I use them. So yes. they don't hang around on a wet thread. Right. right. Um, but if they do, you know, if you're washing them, you want to keep them on the hank, you know, put them not in direct sunlight because you don't want like color to fade and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing with like any type of shell, right? You want to just soak it a little. And so if you have older things that are, you know, have a little bit of, for the lack of a better term, a little grime <laughs> to them, right? Just soak them in. Um, and and that's, that should take care of it. Um, and I have the thing though, you don't want to use anything that's a chemical that's harsh mm -hmm. because it's going to take that sheen off the surface of your, of your natural piece. And um, you have to be careful of like rings or inlay shell or, um, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes when I used to do repairs on pearls, the, the pearls right at the back would be grimy. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, I'd want to clean those and then use just a very soft, even a jewelry cloth um, mm -hmm. and not one that you're going to or a, one that a, a cloth that works well is one that we have for cleaning our glasses. Mm -hmm, that little um, microfiber cloth. Yeah. yeah. And and using that you know, even wet it, having one and wetting it and just running it along um, your pearls. You want to make sure you, you're not using one that's new and has lots, has the chemical in it that cleans your glasses. Mm -hmm. This is just an old, or an old, um, oh, I'm trying to think of those old fashioned dish cloths that are so right, soft. Yeah, I was going to say like an old cotton cloth, yeah. like a flower sack cloth or whatever, yes, right? Exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. And the other thing I wanted to mention about um, the pearls also, you want to make sure, because like a lot of people say, oh, I've got these this strand of vintage pearls. And what they have aren't cultured pearls. They're actually crystals that have been coated with a pearl coating. Mm -hmm. And those vintage pearls and water equal disaster. No. Right? Yes, yes, Because yes. that, that, the water, the the moisture will get between the pearl coating 
and the glass bead yeah. and it will come away. So something like that is best, you know, maybe wiped, but not soaked, not yeah, as no, is. And yeah. we all have, uh, not everyone, we don't all have it, but many of us, and I used to see this a lot in the store, we had like a strand of glass pearls from our grandmother and they mm -hmm. started, they were graduated and they started with one of those little fish hooks in the back. Mm -hmm. And then they were small, like maybe a three millimeter. And then they would go as large as an eight millimeter. And they were about 17 inches. Yeah. People would bring them in wanting them to be restrung, um, wanting to, uh, why was the the pearl coming off? You know, mm -hmm. because they thought they were real pearls. Mm -hmm. They're really precious. I will tell you that. But they're they were glass pearls that were hugely popular. Yeah. Um, you know, with sweater sets in the forties and fifties. You know, that's that right. Strand of pearls um, for Ken and Barbie. That kind yeah. of. Yes. Yes. I have several. I, I like those. I like those yes. old vintage pearls. I think they're yeah. cool. So, um, well, that, that was all great info. Um, we have another question, and I'm going to add this back in, about storage for leather. Oh. And I want to show you a couple of things. I'm going to show you guys how the... Um, how we tie up the leather um, when we send it out to you if you want to rebundle it. But this is something that I do with cords and ribbon across the board for me, right? I get a piece of cardboard like this, right? Just from an old box. Or you can use like a the back of a tablet or an old shirt cord cardboard or something like that. And then what I'll do is I'll either cut or I'll use my cutter to put a, a, a little slice into each side. And then I'll use that to just wind, right? It holds it. This is and, so simple and yet so clever. Well, you know, this is something Janice that I definitely learned from Gran because you know when you have like as your mother did growing up in the depression mm -hmm. god forbid we threw oh, away anything like a piece of twine was like gold gold right and even yeah. when I remember when Grand would pick out a ham or whatever, she'd sometimes wind the thread back on the spool. And I'm like, oh, for crying out loud, Grand, we can afford thread. But like all of the kitchen twine, all of that kind of stuff was always on boards like this. So yeah. I use this like if I have little bits of yarn that I want to save or ribbons that I have that I want to organize. And you can do this by color. And you can keep all of your cardboard the same size. So if this were in your little tray or in your little box, you could then flip through very quickly and find um, and find you know find your colors really easily. Someone's asking. Uh, also, Trish is saying you don't want to do this real tight because you don't want your leather to get a dent in the side. And that's true. You can see how loose I've, mm -hmm. I've wound this, mm -hmm. right? Like this. So, um, so that's, I do the, I, <laughs> this is like second. This is you. Yeah. This is so, this is so me. Um, but it, it, I think it's, as you say, it's super simple, but it's really effective. I and then there was leather in those um, spools that we make at the nests we make at the office. Mm -hmm. And I keep them in a pullout tray based on mm -hmm. color. Mm -hmm. So um, I try to keep them organized by nesting them in. Mm -hmm. So you're going to show yeah, us how we do it. Yeah. I'll show it. And everybody has like their own little spin on this, but mm -hmm. this is how I do it here. And so, um, I'll get my length. So if you get like the it's a lot of leather or whatever and you want to organize it or you just have kind of a nest of 
all kinds of leather hanging around. So this is how we start. Let me let me start this again. I just start to do it automatically without even talking about it. So I'll have like about an inch or maybe two inches of leather here. And with my non-dominant hand, I'll grab it in between my thumb and my index finger. And then I'll fan my fingers out and I'll just wrap my coil around. Okay. And then try to not, again, not super tight, just you know, loose. You don't want your fingers to become a permanent fixture in this piece of leather. Then once you have, I don't know, some, maybe five inches left, maybe, maybe a little more, six inches, you want to find where that little tail is. So see the tail is over here. So I'm going to just come in and I've got this tail. And essentially what we do is kind of a silk wrap. Okay, so I'll loop my leather. I'll show you that again. I'm holding all of this again with my left hand and I'll loop my leather around. And I'll wrap, that tail is, where did that tail go? <laughs> there it is. I'll grab the tail and I'll wrap it around the whole bundle, including that loop I just made. Okay. And I'll wrap it towards the loop. And we usually wrap about three or four times. I think three was the optimum. And then that tail goes through the loop. We grab onto those three wraps that we've just done and we walk those loops down so that the loop meets so that the loop tightens up and that's so when it you, when you're talking about bringing the tail through you're not talking about the original tail you're talking no, about the tail that i the end of what i wrapped yeah. exactly so let me show you that one more time i'm going to undo it and you've all undone the leather when you get it from us right so here's the last this is always Karen, you know, when Karen photographs the leather, I always try and nest it for her really nicely. Um, inevitably, she takes it out and redoes it. So well, that's <laughs> to Karen. get that perfect, yep, to get that perfect wrap, mm -hmm. right? But um, so here's, so yeah, so the tail, the original tail is buried somewhere down there. So again, I'll loop over the top and then I'll grab onto it and I'll wrap this fresh tail, the tail on the opposite end, the one that has the loop in it. I'll wrap it about three times. Mm -hmm. And as it comes around for the fourth wrap, you can see there's the loop. So I'll just send it on through in that same direction. Then my fingers will grab onto those little coils and I'll tighten it up. And that's don't it. Don't tighten it too much, though. Right. No, you don't want it to be so tight that this is funny, but I don't want it to be so loose that this, this loop is big and that mm -hmm. this will come out. So I just firmly kind of hang on to it and pull it up so it tightens itself up. Yeah, and it's just it. for storage. It's just mm -hmm. you don't want, if you can help it, have permanent marks in your leather. Mm -mm. In your leather, this, um, mm -hmm. this uh, silk wrap. Mm -hmm. And so Michelle has a question then about leather, about keeping leather supple. And she says that different types of leather, different brands of leather seem to dry out more quickly. Mm -hmm. I also think, Michelle, it has to do from batch to batch with the leather itself because sometimes we see batches you know from the same vendor the same color the same everything and there are variations and it's just how how it is so um what you can do and i have some leather conditioner that i use when i work with leather like you know sheets of leather and i make something out of it 
There's a, a leather conditioner, or you can get it for leather shoes. You can um, get a little bit on a rag and just run, like, you know, if this was the Pro Polish pad. And I would just run my, not using the Pro Polish pad. Obviously, you'd use a paper towel or mm -hmm. something that you could throw away. But, you know, pull it through, and that'll condition. Um, the leather conditioner is made up of, I, I don't even know what, probably some wax and some other things um, that will work. Um, also, heat will dry out your leather. So you're also saying that, you know, putting it in um, a plastic bag and stuff like that will um, will help. And it's just it's just kind of the nature of, of, of the material, but getting some leather conditioner um, I don't have a particular brand to um, to recommend. Um, and it may, depending on the type of conditioning, you know, if it's an oil or something, it may darken the leather a little bit too. So you'd want to test it. Do you think you could use beeswax? Um, do I have, I have some wax here. I don't know that I've ever waxed leather. Um, But it looks like I'm just running it through a few times. Let's take a look. That's been waxed. I know you guys can't reach through. Doesn't look like it's darkened it that much. And it does feel a little more supple, hmm. actually. So that might I'm not a be a bad nervous about using any kind of uh, liquid yeah uh, no I, it I might agree. take some of the inks and dyes off the leather yeah and that's a good that's a good observation though you know when we use like a leather conditioner a lot of times we use it in stuff for handbags and things mm -hmm. that have died and died and i don't usually have an issue yeah. with it but um, I would test it for sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you. And so, see here, Janice, just that waxing um, has made this actually pretty nice and supple, kind of the opposite of what I might have guessed. I'm going to cut this off. Wow. And you can see if I like tie this knot, right? It's pretty supple. If I bend it, that bend that has been waxed versus maybe this one that's not waxed. So see how it's kind of going back into its straight line? So it does look like, see how the one with the wax is opening up a little bit and the one that isn't wax, which is in my right hand, is kind of staying in that in that bend. So yeah, I would if you have a little sample at home and you've got some bee, beeswax, try it out and see what you think. But I think that was a good suggestion. I've never conditioned my my leather mm -mm. for jewelry. I I will try it now. Um, yeah. But I've never, I've never had the need, but then I've only used what we carry. So yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and also leather that has like this leather here, these colors, this is the natural leather that's been dyed. We with do all dyes with natural, right, with natural dyes. dyes, the leather that like our metallic leathers and things like mm -hmm. that. And I'm trying to see if I have one here, but I don't. Those have been painted. Yes. Right. So that's going to, um, that's also going to react a little bit differently yeah. as well. And those may actually be sealed a little bit better because of the paint covering the leather. So you just kind of need to experiment and find what works for you. But that suggestion with the beeswax, Janice, that was fun to try. Oh, good. That was great. Okay. So uh, it looks like, JP, that that brings us to another addition. Let me take this out. 
And let me put us here of the bead doctors. Now we have one more thing that we wanted to share, right, Janice? Yes, yes. We, we have a secret that we want to share with everybody. Yeah. So here it is. Yeah. We thought that since you guys are all such loyal viewers and we've Thought, and I know that you watch during the day and watch on the replay, that we thought we'd give you a little, you know, pre-weekend treat. Mm -hmm. And so today is Friday, March 26th, 2021. And we have a secret coupon code for you guys who are watching us live. Um, you enter secret 20 and you'll get 20% off your entire order today. And it's valid. No minimum. No minimum, no nothing. Just toss it in there. And it's valid until midnight tonight, Pacific time. So mm -hmm. we are, if you're watching us live, it is 1128 in the AM today on the 26th of March. So again, it's secret 20. And you can see it's right up here on your screen for 20% off your order at beadshop.com. And it's valid until midnight. Now, if you want to share that on our on the bead table mm -hmm. um, with all your bead buddies, that's fine. It's mm -hmm. not really a secret, but we haven't advertised it anyplace else but here. No. So. Yeah. We didn't put it in the newsletter. Nope. This is where it's originating yeah. right here with you yeah. guys on this. So, so. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to uh, just throw the usual suspects up here and say thank you so much you guys of course for watching you can find all of the information on the project and the products from today's broadcast right on our website at beadshop.com sign up for the newsletter for the latest discounts giveaways and new products um, we always are putting fun stuff in for you guys to to uh you know, use discounts or giveaways, fun things like that. And of course, you can always find us on our social. You guys follow us at beadshop.com on our Instagram, where Drea gives a lot of fun sneak peeks of new projects and products that are coming out. Of course, join us on Facebook on the Bead Table. It's our um, Bead Table group. We'd love to have you over there. And of course, if you're watching on YouTube, you guys take a moment right now and like, hit the like button and the subscribe so you never miss one of our videos. So that's it, JP. We've yeah. made it to another Friday. Yeah, and I thought it was a good, I hope everyone liked it. I enjoyed Bead Doctor today. I thought it, um, I thought we covered a lot of ground. Yeah, I I, I love doing questions. it. Yeah, and we still have a few more questions. You know, we have questions uh, that kind of pile up. So mm. if your question didn't get uh, answered today, don't worry, it will, because Drea com uh, compiles a document. So you can always submit your questions for Bead Doctor to info at beadshop.com. And Drea will put them in our uh, document and we'll take a look and we will um, we'll choose a few to answer on air. Usually Bead Doctor is the first Friday of the month. But again, since Emily had a conflict, right. um, we're doing it a week early. And so Emily will be back with us uh, next Friday right. uh, to do um, our uh, fringe segment as well so that's it so janice have a fantastic weekend thank you thank you i think i'm gonna bead this weekend i have Are some you? ideas yeah and i also have repairs of things i want to start wearing again what are oh, you gonna have great. a nice relaxing weekend yeah, well, I've got some things to do. I've got my sample to complete for next week. I think you guys are going to love this. All I'm going to say is about next week's project is it's hip to be square. It's hip to be square. So true. That's all I'm saying. Um, yeah, it looks like everybody was super excited about the bullion. So that was great. And then... And Passover also starts this weekend. Yes, yes, Janice. Yes. So yes, uh, happy. Do you say happy pa Happy Passover? Yeah, happy Passover. Happy yeah. Passover. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that's isn't right. today Good Friday? 
Is today Good Friday? <laughs> You're putting me on the spot, Jamie. Or Palm <laughs> Sunday is Palm Sunday, or I'm oh, sorry. Uh, no, Good Friday. <laughs> this Catholic is, uh, I'm going to have to go to confession. Uh, no, it is Good Friday is next Friday. Okay, okay. I hope I this didn't Sunday's offend anybody. No, um, no. I had to look at it on the calendar because, <laughs> you know. What are you going to do? Every uh, yeah, so it's next Friday. Friday. That's right, especially uh, with the bead doctors. Yeah. So, um, but uh, if you celebrate or not, or just have a great weekend or whatever, you guys uh, yeah. have uh, have a blessed and happy and safe, safe weekend. Remember yes. to keep washing your hands, keep that social distancing. It's great to see so many of you uh, getting your shots and uh, staying healthy. So that's that's the main thing that we want to happen. So thank you ever so, you guys. Um, and I will see you Wednesday. And uh, thanks, JP. It's always fun to do Bead Doctor thank with you. Thank you, Katie. Love All it. right. Thanks, everybody. Bye.